Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about a piece of equipment that not everybody sees as essential and that's the footprint. So I'm going to talk about the purpose for footprints and talk about whether it's really worth having one or not and I'm going to show you my new Terranova footprint which I've recently bought for my Southern Cross one. So let's take a look. So why do you need a footprint? If you're new to camping, you might have heard people mention footprints and you're not really sure what they are. Well, going back a few years, it was standard practice just to lay a sheet down on the ground and then pitch your tent on top of that. And the job of that sheet really was to protect the underside of your tent. Of course, not using a ground sheet makes your pack weight lighter and smaller, but if you do want to protect the underside of your tent, a footprint is one way of doing it. So that's reason number one, really, protecting the underside of your tent from any spiky, sticky, pokey stones or thistles or whatever it may be that could damage the underside of your tent. After all, it's going to be much cheaper to replace a footprint than a tent, or it might be easier to repair a footprint than it would be to repair your tent's floor. Reason number two you might want a footprint is that it gives you a nice clean and dry vestibule that's the area where you might be cooking and storing your equipment. If the weather's been really unpleasant, it's not great when you get to camp, set your tent up, and then you have a soaking wet porch area to rest your rucksack and maybe try and put your clothes, sort your shoes out and cook your food. So another reason you might want a footprint is that it gives you a nice clean and dry area to rest all your gear on. A third reason you might want a footprint is something you wouldn't necessarily think of. So because you're lying a waterproof sheet over all of that wet ground that you might be pitching your tent on, that means that that moisture in the ground can't evaporate overnight and come up into your tent, so it should reduce the condensation within your tent. So that's a bit of talk about the reasons you might want to buy one, and now I'll get out my brand new Terranova Southern Cross one footprint and we'll have a look at that. So here it is, it's not a big thing. This is the official Terranova Southern Cross one footprint. This retails at £55 on Terranova's website, but a few weeks ago Terranova had a 30% off sale, so I took advantage of that and I bought this for £38.50, including free postage. I'll get it out of the bag now and we can have a look. So straight away, it looks and feels well made. It feels like the very same material that's used on the floor of my tent. That is 70 denier polyurethane rated to 10,000 millimeters hydrostatic head. So I believe this is the same material as that floor. In the corners, we've got short lengths of shock cord through eyelets and they've been reinforced nicely. So it shouldn't damage the material when you put tension on the shock cord. And down the middle of the footprint where we have the seam, that has already been seam taped. So it retains that waterproofing. My Hilleberg Solo, which I bought unused secondhand, came with a footprint already attached. And it has a nice little system in the corner where there's a, a toggle system that connects the six pegging out points of the footprint to the underside of the tent. So when I finish my camp, I can roll the whole lot up in one, and then the next time I use it, the whole lot rolls out with the footprint attached, and that's really convenient. So what I want to do is have a look at my new footprint for the Southern Cross One, and see if there's some way I can attach it to the tent so it's just as convenient as my Hilleberg. I'll get the tent pitched quickly now and we can have a look. So with the tent pitched, we'll see how the footprint looks underneath it. What you can hopefully see is that the footprint is roughly the same shape as the underside of the tent. So we have the two narrow points at the ends and then the two wide points at the middle, which coincide with that lateral blue pole that goes across the tent. As I pointed out earlier, there is a label just here that allows you to identify the upper face of the footprint so you don't get it the wrong way up. So I'll drag this under the tent now and you can see how it looks. If I lift up one end of the tent, you can now see that the footprint covers the entire underside of the tent. This is just one bonus of having a freestanding tent, but I'll now open the door and show you how it looks. As you can see, I haven't pegged the tent down yet. This is just so I can show you a bit more easily. So the vestibule is now 
nicely protected by the footprint. It's lovely and dry in here. Any of the wet ground below is now hidden beneath the footprint. So I have a nice dry surface to put my cooking equipment, my rucksack, my shoes, anything else. And if I move the camera around a little bit, you can hopefully see that all the way down inside the tent there, the footprint is a really good match for the shape of the interior of the tent. I'm now going to turn my attention to the six shock cord attachment points. Originally, I did look at whether or not I could loop the shock cord through one of these eyelets in the peg out webbing straps at the corner of the tent. But I found that doing that meant that the strap ended up getting twisted just with that slightly side loading of the strap by the shock cord. So I didn't really like the idea of that. I don't think it's really enough just to sort of loop that shock loop around the bottom of the pole end either. But for now, what I think I'm going to do is follow what I presume is Terra Nova's original design intent, which is for the loop of shock cord to get pegged out with this little length of Dyneema on the corner strap. So I'll show you how that looks now. And as you can see now, that footprint is nice and taut. One area I'm not entirely sure about is this little section here where the footprint comes out to meet the blue pole at the bottom. You can see that the footprint is slightly protruding beyond the fly sheet and that's something you need to be careful of because if water runs down the fly sheet and then lands on top of the footprint instead of running straight down to the ground, water can track across the footprint and then sit between the footprint and the underside of your tent floor. And of course, that's the whole idea of having a footprint to try and protect your tent floor. So if water gets in there, A, it'll take away some heat from the inside because water is a good conductor of heat, but B, it will allow any water to track up through any puncture holes that you do have in your tent floor, which hopefully you don't, but that can happen. But once I've pegged out this little bungee on the fly sheet over in this section, it does actually pull the tent out over that section of the footprint a little bit. So I'll just have to see how that goes in time. I mentioned about my Hilleberg solo footprint being really easy to use because it's always attached to the tent. So what I'm going to do now is perform a really small, simple and cheap modification to connect my Terra Nova footprint to the tent itself. So what I'm going to do is take this peg out in the corner here and I've got the shock cord loop from the footprint in one hand and then I've got the peg out loop next to it. All I'm going to do is put a cable tie around the two of them and I'm going to keep it nice and loose so they're not locked together, they're just prevented from separating. That's all it is. There's a cable tie going through the peg out loop, through the shock cord loop, and then of course I'll cut that end off nice and neatly so it can't puncture anything around it. Okay, so with all six of those shock cord loops on the footprint, cable tied onto the peg out loops of the tent, let's see if we can pick up the whole lot. That looks pretty good to me. So the footprint is now being suspended on the cable ties and even if I want to reposition my tent now, the whole lot remains connected and then I can just pull out those shock cord loops when I peg the tent out and the whole lot will peg down as one. As I said earlier in the video, this footprint is brand new. I haven't even camped with it yet. I just got it out of the bag today, had a quick go in the garden realized I wanted to use those cable ties and thought I'd come out and make a video to show you all. I haven't found any videos at all on YouTube about the Southern Cross footprint, so I hope this is helpful to you. Of course, when I come to use this setup in the field, I'll share my thoughts about it and let you know if it works. Maybe I need to make some tweaks to the setup I've got now, but it seems to work. It suspends the footprint off the bottom, which is how I wanted it to work. 
And when I rolled all of this up earlier at home before coming out to film today, I did try to see if it would all fit back in the Terra Nova stuff sack that this tent came in originally. And sure enough, it did with the footprint rolled up in it. I didn't have the poles in there because I always carry the poles separately, but it's good to know that you don't really increase your pack volume by all that much by adding the footprint. So if you have any questions about footprints, whether it's about the Southern Cross 1 in particular, or footprints in general across other tent ranges, please drop some comments down in the section, and thanks for watching.